Uh, well, for those of you who may not know me, my name is Kendall Locke, and I am the District 6 Director. Uh, I just want to say thank you to each of you uh, for being here. Thank you guys for uh, deciding to join us. Of course, you guys could be anywhere, um, and so definitely glad to have you here and sharing the space with us. Uh, Councilmember Williams just walked in. He was running in some traffic from a city, another city meeting. As you guys could imagine, we're rocking and rolling. Uh, but I just want to share a few updates just on some upcoming meetings um, that is happening here in the district. Um, then I'll pass it over to Councilmember Williams and then we'll pass it over to our animal control uh, team. Uh, so, of course, we have this meeting that is going on tonight. We have another meeting that is scheduled for March the 24th, which is a Thursday. That is at 6 o'clock, and that will be at Chisholm Trail Community Center. That is going to be a meeting on the upcoming uh, bond as well as the upcoming charter election and just some other things that city staff wants to uh, talk and update residents on. And so, like I said, that's at 6 o'clock on March the 24th. Um, and a, a great deal of our city staff will be in attendance with us, so you will have the opportunity to meet them if you haven't already. Ask all of your questions pertaining to the bond and to the charter. See what's going to be included in the bond proposal. Um, and so that will be that meeting on the 24th. Also on Thursday, April the 16th, which is a Saturday, we have a new monthly initiative uh, called Litter Day with Dr. J, and that is where we are choosing different neighborhoods, um, and we are going in, partnering with Keep Fort Worth Beautiful uh, to clean up those areas, and so we are working hand-in-hand -hand with our litter abatement team, and for those of you who may not know, because I know several people reach out to the office about it, um, our litter abatement team, they work around the clock with picking up litter. And so, of course, if you ever have any concerns about a particular area, um, something in a park that, you know, is just looking a little trashy than normal, feel free to reach out and I'll get that over to them and they'll take care of that. But also, too, um, we will be doing those voluntary cleanups. And so we kicked off our first one this past Saturday. We picked up, I got a report, it was 58 pounds of trash. And so we did um, all... Yeah, that is something to clap for. Uh, <laughs> so we did all of uh, Summer Creek, or a great deal of Summer Creek Drive, um, and then in Chisholm Trail Park, and then some of that developing area. Um, we're also in the process of scheduling a meeting and, and comparing schedules uh, with the master developer of the um, near the roundabout um, at Summer Creek Drive, just to update everyone on the development that's coming there. Um, we have some great updates and great things that are coming, so definitely want to be able to update you guys um, on that. Um, and other than that, of course, we have some great updates pertaining to redistricting and, and just other things that are happening across the city that we will definitely get out via email and robocalls and all of those great things. Um, as always, if I can be of any assistance, um, I'll give you both my number and my email. My number is 817-372. 1138 that's 817-372-1138 and that's my cell I don't mind you guys calling me on my cell or texting me and then also to uh, my email which is Kendall that's k-e-n-d-y-l-l -L dot lock l-o-c-k-e at Fort Worth Texas all spelled out dot gov so that's Kendall dot lock at Fort Worth Texas dot gov um, please feel free to reach out um, if you have any questions, just want to, you know, have a, a schedule some time with Council Member Williams just to talk and, and share your concerns or say hello. Um, we're always here and, and glad to be serving. So without further ado, I'll bring up Council Member Williams. All righty. Good evening, District 6. <laughs> oh, come on. We need a little more excitement than that. Good evening, District 6. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> it is a great district indeed. Thank you for that. Um, well, good evening, everyone. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm Councilmember uh, Jared Williams, and it's such an honor to be able to serve this great district. Uh, so many amazing neighbors, so many amazing neighborhoods, um, and all of you are who make you know our district great. So thank you for being um, an amazing neighbor, and thank you for sharing in this work with us. Um, I'm really um, excited to be able to share all of the updates. It's egret season, which you know makes some people's hair stand up on their arms. I totally get that. Um, but we have amazing updates to be able to share about um, what we are doing as a city, what I'm doing um, alongside Kendall in our office, and then also what you can do to help us in 
um, helping our egrets along their migratory you know, season and their flight paths while also reducing the impact that happens on our residential and commercial properties. So um, without any further ado, my role is really to kind of share what we've been doing as a council office. Um, and then I'll introduce some of our um, City of Fort Worth team to share a little bit more about um, the plan and what you can do um, as a part of that plan. And then we'll round off this event with um, Q&A. Um, and so at that moment, you can ask any and all questions and myself and um, the team that you see around will be able to answer your questions. So um, when we were elected on June uh, 5th, um, you know, we started receiving a lot of your emails about egrets. Um, my background's environmental science, so little did I know on the first day I would be able to handle a conservation issue. So um, I, I thought that was really interesting. However, I, I was also really troubled to know the magnitude of impact that um, these federally protected birds were having d through their nesting and roosting on our um, residential and commercial properties. Um, and so we got hard to work alongside many of you, one, learning about how egrets and their um, roosting and nesting were um, impacting each of you in um, our neighbors, the neighborhoods. And then also, as a part of those conversations with you all and with our team, like code compliance, animal control, um, et cetera, um, we were able to develop um, a couple of plans um, to address that. So um, in a few weeks, maybe, when, what council meeting are we approving the operational policy? On the 22nd, so that's an exact date, um, um, March 22nd, we'll be approving um, our egret, uh, migratory bird operational policy. Um, that'll basically, the intention of it is to coordinate our city services um, and then to coordinate education efforts um, for our residents um, that are intentional and regularly scheduled because we know that there's always gonna be a migratory season. Um, and so it'll schedule our plan and our coordination efforts. So as a part of that plan, it does three things. One, um, it sets um, instructions on how we're able to deter um, birds, um, specifically egrets, but it covers all migratory birds. Um, the second, second thing it does um, as it basically coordinates um, all of our departments in doing that. And then the third thing it does, uh, well, in that coordination, it educates um, our neighbors. So there's an education component of this plan. Um, and then lastly, it um, promotes conservation. Um, and so um, we are super excited to have the operational plan. Um, we also recognize that um, plans don't work unless we have um, amazing people to execute them. So all of the people that you see um, in the back of the room and all the people that are sitting next to you are part of this plan. Um, and we'll go deeper into details with that. Um, as a part of the conservation efforts, um, I'm excited to share that we've um, really been working hard to ensure that we have um, open space conservation areas that have more suitable habitat um, than our residential and commercial areas for our federally protected birds. Um, and one of the highlights uh, from our work in the, in the first eight months together, um, we were able to approve the largest open space conservation area um, ever in the history of Fort Worth, right here in District 6. Um, it's Rock Creek Park, and it's 275 acres worth of open space conservation, which is almost a, a day's flight, no, not a day, but a couple of minutes flight for Egret, right down the road um, by Tarleton State's campus. As a part of that conservation effort, um, I think it's 80 acres of that will be designated as traditional park space, but the remaining about 200 acres um, will be for birding, trails, hiking, and conservation. So um, it's an amazing win as a part of this conservation piece of our operational policy. Um, at, also, some more good news. Um, we, um, as a council, um, did something um, to fund our, or to replenish our fund for our open space conservation program. Um, we called for $15 million in the bond um, to create more conservation areas across um, the city of Fort Worth that can serve as suitable habitat for our migratory birds, um, recreational amenities for our residents, um, and just help us you know, be a shining example of what it looks like to um, promote conservation in um, one of the largest cities in the country. So um, that is some big news, yeah. <laughs> Um, and again, you know, um, all of that work came from all of the discussions that we had in our first listening circle, um, which was definitely a tough meeting for all of us, right? Um, and and um, it's, it's because of these kind of conversations that we're able to continue to, um, you know, represent um, and, and respond to the issues that we all have as, as neighbors in District 6. Um, so that is some exciting news on conservation. Um, the other piece we recognize is that, you know, this plan, 
um, won't be able to deter all egrets. Um, and what we recognize um, is that um, even um, with the best plan, we're still gonna see some impacts on our residential and commercial areas. Um, and so um, Kendall and I, as an office, we've been working with Congresswoman Kay Granger, our uh, con congressional representative, um, to look at what federal funds um, we can um, secure uh, to try to provide relief to help um, um, property owners, residential and commercial, um, who are affected by the impacts of, um, of migrants. We recognize that they're federally protected and when they're nesting, um, when they begin to nest and roost, um, we can no longer deter them. Um, and, you know, as a result of that, you know, important federal piece of regulation, um, I think it's also important to recognize that the, that, that um, conservation effort has an impact on our residents and our business owners. And so, I, and so that's why we're working alongside of uh, co the Congresswoman um, to create resources that help mitigate the impact um, for the egrets that the plan doesn't deter to better habitat. Um, so more news on that will be coming and we'll continue to share that in our newsletters. Uh, right now we're working on a letter with the Congresswoman's office um, basically to advocate to Congress for more resources to help us um, as we get impacted by all sorts of migratory seasons. Um, then the last thing I wanna update is on March 22nd, we'll be doing the, uh, the proclamation as well or another date. So on March 22nd, we'll also be doing a proclamation um, just to recognize as a city our commitment to deterring um, um, and, and conserving our migratory birds, um, but deterring them and their impact on residential and commercial areas uh, for open space conservation areas. Um, and so um, if you'd like to come and celebrate, um, you know, that commitment and basically take the pledge alongside council, um, that is a great meeting to come see us in action um, and to be a part of an important day in terms of the city, um, you know, making a, um, um, an official commitment um, to um, addressing this issue. Um, and then the last thing, our co-compliance team, uh, Brandon Bennett, is working on um, designating or a certification to designate us as a Bird City USA. And so basically a Bird City USA is a really distinguished um, certificate. Um, we also are a Tree City USA, for those of you who didn't know. Um, but the Bird City USA is basically um, just a process saying that as a city, we're taking steps to uh, create conservation areas for our birds and our, especially our migratory birds. So um, that's, a, that's a lot of what we're working on um, from, a, from a council office. But please know that um, you know, our solutions and ideas are only as good as you know, our conversations with you on. So as you continue to see things, um, as you continue to see issues related to this issue, please um, reach out to our office so that we can continue to work on this issue. Um, with you. So um, that is a bit of our update. And um, next, I will invite Chris Lorette. He's going to come uh, share a little, about, bit, little bit about this plan um, and what you all can do to help us um, in executing this plan. So Chris, come on up, and then we will answer Q&A after uh, the staff presentation. So thank you all again. Hello, my name is Chris Lorette. I'm a field superintendent over animal control and egrets. We don't want them, right? No. no egrets. So this year, we have been putting out a lot of stuff. Uh, me and Councilmember Williams, anybody seen our video with the egret stuff? So he was a good guy, I was the bad guy. So uh, a lot of that is just making sure that everybody understands that the egrets are, they're not bad but they're not good because we don't want them in our properties. We don't want them to mess up our properties. We don't want them to nest in our trees. We just don't want them, right? We want them outside. We want them in the forest away from us so we don't have all the smell, the birds, the poop, all that good stuff. Uh, but the one thing y'all do want to look at is we're right on the brink. You know, they normally fly in end of February. They, depending on the weather, they might be here now. They might be here later. We got a good couple of cold spells that's coming through. It might push them back a little bit. But uh, you want to look for your night herrings. They got those, they're kind of grayish black. They got your little yellow streaks on their head. Uh, you want to look for your blue herrings, the little bluebirds. They're, they're the ones that's going to come in first, 
okay uh, you want to make sure you get your streamers up in the trees you want your scary eye balloons above the trees and I know a lot of people can't do that so you're gonna have to get somebody to get or you get some good long rope and you just let it go up there in helium it scares them uh, if anybody wants to get those little owl stands those are great you put them in the trees they scare they don't like them uh, egrets don't have a really uh, a predator okay uh, hawks eagles all those guys they don't mess with the egrets because the egrets got those long beaks it'll poke their eyes out egrets will go after bigger animals too bigger birds all those things uh, a lot of people i've been driving through the neighborhoods my guys back here uh, some of my officers senior senior officer jose flores uh, officer carlos garcia and officer ryan mcdaniel officer trent westbrook and officer joshua norris Y'all gonna see them driving in through the neighborhoods this whole time. Because from now till May, our whole mission is egrets. Okay, y'all, if y'all see an egret, anybody knows how to use Fort Worth, my Fort Worth app? Use it. They have a sighting thing on it. You just go in specifically for egret sightings specifically you go in there wildlife egret sighting you send it off you can take a picture of it send it to us we'll I, I look at my forward app all the time and I'll look at the pictures these guys have it on their phones they can look at it they can go over there give us a where are they at let us know uh, we're gonna make a lot of noise and if you see it and if it's in your yard or your trees Pot and pans, you know, air horns. Uh, don't use the bangers, please. We Fort Worth does have a fireworks incineraries that y'all can't use. I don't want y'all to get in trouble. Uh, we do use them. We have a permit to be able to use them. Uh, we have to notify Fort Worth and Fort Worth Fire Police and Fire because they don't want us making any fires or. Thing, so we got to be very careful uh, you definitely want to make sure your trees are cleaned out uh, a lot of people have them done I see some that don't have them done if they're your neighbor talk to them say look you know I don't want you to be the, be that person that's gonna have your trees full of egrets you know if they can do anything to you know take care of that trim out the trees get it cleaned up clean your yards they love the twigs. You know, they'll jump up and down in the trees to make that nest. You see them doing that, they're trying to build nests. The little white egrets, the little, the, the little, they're white, they're small, they're young. That's your scouts. That's the ones that's gonna come in. They're gonna start building those nests and they're gonna work in, they're gonna start clucking their, their noise and making that, that noise that y'all ain't gonna really know what's going on. Some people think it's cute, pretty, until the mess comes and it's too late, okay? So keep watching. The more you watch, you walk in through the neighborhood, look up. Nobody wants to look up. Everybody's looking down, watching where their feet goes. Look up, stop, look up, look in the trees. They had a lady last year up north. She was walking, never looked up. One day she looked up and she said, oh my, look all the white birds. It was too late. Already had a whole bunch of nests. You know, we had to go over there. We tried to do what we can, get them out. We don't want to be that. We don't want to be there. Last year we had it on Winchester. Now, thank, thanks to all the neighborhood, all the neighborhood citizens in that area, working with the lady and getting the trees chopped down and getting them cleaned out. That's great. We're halfway there. And I say halfway. You know, because the whole way is we don't gonna we're not going to have any egrets. There's still trees. When it starts blooming, the egrets are going to come. You know, and it's soon, very very soon. 
everybody's looking at me. It's like, yeah, I want me to say more and more. I mean, it's, you know, it's hard to really say what's going to really, really happen. You know, a lot of us, we're going to be in the neighborhoods. We're going to do what we can. We need y'all to let us know where they at. We need y'all to walk outside with a pot and pan, with an air horn, whatever you can do, just to scare. If you see more and more coming, we know they come in around 6 o'clock, 6.30. When the lights start to come, you know, they'll start flying in. Uh, and they're going to come in a lot. We had about 155 to 200 last year on Winchester. Double that. More and more. It, they don't stop. It's a, uh, it's a process. They, they, they're not the smartest birds, okay? But it's a habit for them. That's why they call it a habitat. It's their habit. They just keep going. They go to the area where they used to. So we try to scare them out, and hopefully we can scare them out to where they're not in the neighborhood next to you. We don't want to keep moving them to the neighborhood, to neighborhood, to neighborhood. I want to move them completely out. To get them there, it's going to be hard. We try to track them. It's hard to track them. Sometimes they'll fly, and they may fly two neighborhoods over. They might fly 25 miles away, but it's hard. So we're gonna need y'all help. Let us know where they at. If y'all see them, you get out there, you scare them out, you see more of them, give us, call us. Take a picture of them. Just, I don't care how many times you call. The number is 817-392-1234. The call center will take the call. They'll put it in the system. I'm, we're going to get to. No, no, no question. Repeat the number again. Oh, I'm sorry. 817 392 1234. That's our city call center. They'll take the information. They'll put it in the system. My officers get it. They have a computer in the truck. They get the call right there in the system. We'll get out there. These guys are only going to be doing egrets when it's time. We do a lot of other things, but egrets is our special priority. You want me to keep talking? Or you, I mean, I can go on and on yeah. for egrets. <laughs> uh, can you bring up the team so that they can um, all see them and kind of put a name to the face? Carlos, Jose, and then once Josh. The we'll open up the floor. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Can you bring up some feathers? <laughs> Whenever you go on my Fort Worth app, I'm sorry, I didn't on the my Fort Worth app, my whenever, Fort yeah, the my Fort Worth app, you have to you download it onto your phone, and you can you can take a picture of the egret, and it allows you to go ahead and put the address in there and all, and that will just automatically you just hit add, and it will go to the through the system. I worked with our call center, the supervisor, superintendent over there now. She's created the whole thing, and I worked with her on how to get it all in there. Also, also if you have trouble downloading the app, you can call our office, um, and we will connect you with the My Fort Worth team, and they can help you download it. <laughs> and, then, oh, and then also, if you see a sighting, you can also email it to us, and we can put it in the system if you don't have a, a smartphone. so. Um, I guess we can open it. Do you want to introduce them first, and then we'll since open it for Q and A? Yeah, since I introduced them earlier, the, this is our my senior code officer Jose Flores. He's over South District, so he's always in South doing everything. Not only egress. So if y'all need him, he'll be out here. You ha I have my special operations guy right here, Carly, uh, Carlos Garcia. Then I have Trent Westbrook. A lot of y'all probably seen Ryan McDaniels because he's been out in the neighborhood a lot recently. And then I got Josh Norris. Uh, all these guys are gonna be out there. If y'all see them in the dog trucks, because all of them drive the dog trucks, y'all see them, y'all wanna say something to them, ask them a question, they have all the information too. They, I have a whole bunch of paperwork and all, they read over it, they know it. Some of them been doing it for a couple years now with me. 
So any questions y'all have, just ask them, stop them, wave them, wave them down. Thank you for that, Chris. Uh, I wanted y'all to, oh yeah. <laughs> I wanted y'all to have a name to the faces so that when you see our team in the neighborhood, you'll know, you know, who they are and why they're, you know, making noise in your neighborhood. Um, we also have our PD, our MPO officers here, and uh, we have Brandon Morse, who is you all's uh, MPO. Um, and so also, if you hear any noises that sound strange, you can feel free to call the MPO. Um, um, nine times out of 10, we're coordinated in our efforts, 10 times out of 10 mostly, but um, they, they will be able to give you information about the noises you hear. I know um, the, these sounds can sound like gunshots, um, and so, you know, it's important that, you know, you connect with the MPO um, so that he can, you know, update you all on whether or not this is eager deterrence or whether it's an emergency that um, we need to route through PD. Okay. Um, at this point, we'll open up the floor for Q&A and um, me and Chris will tag team um, any question that you have. And we may bring our MPOs up if, if it's a PD related question with egrets. So, yes, sir. Last year, you mentioned uh, you were able to take some of the eggs out of the nest and you were hoping to be able to do more this year. Do you have a federal permit to do that? Uh, yeah, she has to you repeat. So he was asking me if last year I was able to pull out some eggs and nests out of the trees. Uh, to do that, you have to have a federally, a depredation permit to do that. We have uh submit it for it and it's in the approval process at this time now with those permits there's a limitation for everything and of course you know i almost went over my limitation last year and that's why we had to stop uh this year i did request for more uh but even with even with me submitting for the permit to do that you have to give a good program. You got to tell the federal guys that, look, this is last resort. Because our whole thing is last year we was able to pull 190 something eggs out. We have to deal with all those eggs the way they tell you to. And then you, once you get rid of them and you, I, I, we was able to actually give them to all the rescues the rescue guy took care of them. They, whatever was viable, they dealt with it, and we didn't have to kill any birds, which was what I wanted to do. I don't want to kill any birds. I just want to get them out of there. Uh, but the program, you have to explain exactly what, it's all about deterrence. So before I get to the point of actually pulling eggs and pulling birds, we need to deter. So that's the last resort. My next question is, uh, Avery Island, which is owned by the people that make Tabasco sauce, Macalini's, they've had a rookery there for about 100 years. And it's a raised platform. The birds come every year, same place. If we had something like this in this new thing that you're talking about, the, the, the land that we're setting aside, if we built a permanent thing like that, then you could take the eggs there, maybe, get them started. Is that going to happen? Yes, so that's what we're working with our federal partners on and with uh, Congresswoman Kay Granger's office. Um, they're also helping us with the permit as well. Um, we are looking to, um, um, and I can't disclose some of the um, efforts just yet, um, but we are looking to set up um, or use best practices to attract egrets to our conservation area. So um, we are very early on in the discussions of that, and so I don't have a lot of details on that, but that is one of our next steps. We're also looking at partnering with the Army Corps of Engineers because they also own um, a lot of property adjacent to Rock Creek Park that's much closer to here by Benbrook Lake. So we're hoping to kind of create a system of strategies that'll attract them to our um, 275 acres, but also the Corps of Engineers. But it's very, we're very early on in discussions on that, but that's an amazing idea. Thank you, yes. I wanted to put in a plug from the My Fort Worth app. I heard about it at another meeting that I attended at the Chisholm Trail thing, and I didn't think that I have to use it, but it was very responsive and very prompt when I um, reported a sewer leak in a neighbor's yard, and I had to submit my email, and I submitted pictures of what I saw, and boy, within one day, 
they were on it and it was taken care of. That is so amazing. At any chance after this we can record that statement? <laughs> that was commercial ready, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> the minute I thought, yeah, right, I wonder, and bingo, I think later that day I got my response, mm -hmm. um, and I, they had somebody out there that night, and I think it was on the private property, and, but the people were notified, and they had to get somebody to take care of it, but it was wonderful. That's so amazing, and now you can use my fourth app uh, to tag specifically egrets. Um, but you can also use that for a number of other things. If you see litter, you can tag it. I actually have my litter picker uppers. I don't know what you call that thing, but in my best. So I'm also actively stopping along the side of the road, putting in my fo Fort Worth and picking up what I can, right? So this app is really great. It saves you a lot of time. You can also call the call center, but the app is also really good. What other questions? Yes. Was our area the main area of Fort Worth? last year that had the biggest egret problem? So the question was, was our area uh, the area that had the biggest egret problem? Um, Chris, you might want to answer this, but from my understanding, no other council members were talking about egrets. <laughs> <laughs> so I, there's an inside joke in the council offices that uh, I'm the egret guy, <laughs> so, uh, but I'll let Chris answer it more quantitatively. <laughs> so we had, you had 125 or 155, I tried to count all of them. Uh, we also had China Rose up north. It's a, uh, I can't remember the actual neighborhood, but they got hit the year before as well. Uh, that year, did, last year we had probably about 75 in there. We was able to actually get all of them out and all the nests out, so yes, you are the only one that got hit hardest. <laughs> but I want to give you a little bit of, it's not only here, and that's why we try to get, we send out stuff to the whole city. And I told my PIO, which is our public information officer, I said, if you send it to one neighborhood this year, I'm gonna be upset, okay? Send it to everybody, because everybody needs to know, it's not just your area, because if we move them from here and they just fly somewhere else and they don't care, they don't do anything, what's going to happen is it just moves the problem. And I'm not liking moving the problem. I like to deal with what I can. Unfortunately, every year, it's, you know, I've been doing this for 12 years. So, yes, it moves because nobody listens. And I want everybody to listen because it's a, it's a problem that we're going to continue to have if we don't get the whole city together about it. That's really great. And just to add on that, um, in addition to all of the communication that we're doing citywide, um, we're also, um, we have um, coordination as staff to where um, we're doing things like um, doing eager tree trims in our right-of-ways and in our park spaces. Um, we're also doing our part on all of the hundreds of, if not thousands of acres that we own in, in city property as well so you know we'll be doing that um, same thing i know that's important in candle ridge for example because of you know the great parks that we have going through candle ridge so we'll also be maintaining that area as well and the parks team knows to look for egrets as well so that's another example of the coordination going on is there a website we can go to that we see all the meetings that are coming up or how do we find out about the meetings and stuff? Absolutely. So first, if you sign in today, um, that'll um, add you to our District 6 um, e email list. Um, so anytime we have events like this, we're send, we'll send an email. We'll also do a robocall, so you'll hear my voice. Um, it won't really be me. It's recording. Um, you'll also um, get our monthly newsletters. Um, so like today, our newsletter went out, and it had the list of all of our upcoming events and the things that we're working on. Um, and then also, you can always reach out to our office, um, you know, for more specific details about any of that. Kendall, is there any? And then too, there's the mic. Then too, on the when you go to the City of Fort Worth website, um, and it's under government, you hit that tab, and then it lists all of the council districts. And then if you hit Council District Six, 
um, and then it should pop up with his picture. Um, and then you'll see there's a, to the right of the screen, it says um, District 6 News or it says City District News or something to that effect. Um, and it will actually list all of the upcoming events. And then there's also a master uh, city calendar when you go onto the city's website um, and they should populate there as well. And then just one addition, for those of you who have social media, we also post regularly on social media. Mm -hmm. um, our, all of our social media handles are Jared Williams TX. And so um, you'll see all of our event flyers and any community meetings that we have or any community events that we are hosting. What other questions? Yes. Um, two Junes ago, we moved to the other side of Chisholm Trail and on the small gated community. Mm -hmm. And we had gorgeous Golden Crown night parents. Mm -hmm. We've had them both in June's past. And um, I thought they were great until I found out yeah. <laughs> that they're the leaders. Mm -hmm. um, how worried should I be? This is going to be the third June. I haven't seen any emerge yet. Well, this time, um, please, when you see them, reach out to us. That way, Even one. Even, especially if it's the herrings, because then we know where the scouts are. Chris, you want to add to that because you're the expert on this thing. I've, I've become more read and versed on egrets, but he really knows it. So if they're in the trees right now and there's a nest, I would go ahead and take the nest out. If you see them come in, the yellow crown night herrings are the most stubborn. Uh, they don't like to leave. They will fight you. They will fly back and forth and you scare them away they'll come back next week they don't they say they paid their rent they want to come back <laughs> get the get the nest out trim it up scare them if you see them coming scare them it's going to take a little while with the night herrings uh if you see the white birds coming in it's too late so do it now oh get rid of them we get rid of the night herrings yeah but the night uh i'd rather not have none of them because they just multiply one year two years three the next thing you're gonna get boop, 50 of them i would just scare them let them go where they need to go in the by the water and, and you're stuff. closer to the lake so yeah. you know you deterring them the odds are they're going to make it somewhere in the habitat around the lake in the core engineer's property or our property on rock creek park so um, they'll find suitable habitat. You're really close to where we're trying to get them to go. <laughs> we could send them to Dallas. <laughs> so he said we could send them to Dallas, but I didn't say that. <laughs> Hi, Dallas. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, my understanding is you're saying this year we are not to use the banger guns because of the fire department concern. So the city does have a fireworks ordinance. Uh, you're not, and basically the bangers fall under fire, the firework ordinance. You could get a cite, citation for it. Um, I know they said they wouldn't have a problem with the screamers. Uh, my only thing is I don't want you to get in trouble. I would check with them if they have a problem with it or if they're not going to have a problem with it. I know last year the wildlife and fishery came out and they started getting on us and i said hold on i got my permit and they just left they left me alone but uh i don't my permit does not cover y'all it only covers me the city and my subordinate or my designees so i don't want nobody getting in trouble for anything that now i know some people had a cannon last year uh, that's impressive <laughs> you know if they are right with you doing that i mean i just don't want nobody getting in trouble and you know? the screamers too they're saying don't use them the bangers, don't use the guns here if that's what they're telling you i wouldn't use them i don't want i mean those citations can be up to i don't know how much y'all if they know how much the citations or i know some of the citations could be up to 500 to 2000 depending so I, don't, I just don't i know if i if anything i do wrong on my permit that's a ten thousand dollar fine to me so 
I understand that. Uh, you can't reach them. I mean, you just have to can. And that, call me. Call me. We got them. We, I have boxes of them. I, I prepared myself for this year. So I can use them. I can shoot them up in the air. These guys like doing them. You know. <laughs> yes, we would love to go stash. <laughs> I don't want to know about it. If you see any of these guys and you want to talk to them, <laughs> uh, just to add to that question, um, a couple of things. Um, one, like Chris said, call us. We'll come and use the cannons and um, you know all of the um, really heavy duty deterrence um, devices. Um, we will also get back with um, you all. Ken, do you want to send everyone an email? Okay, we'll send an email today about what uh, we'll send the um, the fireworks ordinance, and then we'll also call out like what devices are not allowed. Um, that way, you'll have a better understanding of that. This week, this week. not today. No, no. I, did I say today? I mean, what time is it? It's um, it's nighttime. Okay, no. To, sometime this week, we'll we'll send that um, out. Um, and then the other thing I was going to say, I lost it. I'll come back to it. Oh, um, so one thing we didn't discuss is what happens when you actually have the egret nesting in your tree. Um, at that point, we can no longer deter. We go, um, we go into uh, um, our, our remediation part of the plan um, where we start cleaning the streets and doing that kind of thing. So we also have services so that if you do have a um, egret nesting, please do not deter or disrupt. Um, that's um, a, federally illegal, um, please call us and then we will be able to provide services to clean the street. Unfortunately, we can't um, provide um, services on your property, um, but we can certainly help mitigate the impact that happens um, in the right of way and in the um, street areas as well. So um, please notify us of that as well. Um, that's part of the reason why we're working with Congresswoman Kay Granger's office because we recognize once they're nested, um, our hands are kind of tied at that point. So um, um, I, I wanted to make that um, caveat so that we're all aware that these deterrence activities are only for when the birds, um, when we have night herrings and when the birds aren't nesting yet. Any other questions? In the very back. Oh, last year, I, I had tried several times to contact Barry. I had his number. I think I had his email. He didn't answer my calls, didn't return the call, didn't respond to the emails. So what number do we call to report? I've got a uh, blue herring in the tree behind my house. And is that number answered 24-7? Uh, how do I get hold of somebody? And if I can't, and I've got the screaming sirens, uh, which I used last year without any issues. Uh, can I use those? And if you have a permit, where did you get the permit? And can I get a permit to use them? All really great questions. And first, I just want to say, um, you know, it's our job to serve you all excellently. And so, um, you know, from me to you, um, I extend my deepest apologies for um, not being able to connect with the city. Um, you know, for this year, that's part of the reason why we're putting this plan. If you do um, cite um, egrets, you can call the 1234 number that um, Chris gave out earlier, or you can call Kendall's um, direct number as well. Is it answered 24 7? No, this call center is not 24 7, correct? Actually, actually or, it is. Yeah. So, so the call center is open pretty much from 6 to, I think, 6 or 7, the like that. Center. The live call center. Whenever after six o'clock, my I have a dispatchers that are logged on and we open all day long pretty much. Uh, we're twenty four seven. So I answer that phone that you call whenever you call the one two three four number. That goes to my officer. They pick up and they answer the phone till twelve a.m. After that, you would have to leave a message or a, I think it's like a, a call message. They'll, you leave it in there, they'll pick it up in the morning and they'll give it to us. And if it's an egret or anything like that. The reason we changed that was mainly because I can't have my officers 24 seven. Barry was a supervisor. He can't guarantee he was gonna answer the phone all the time. 
and I didn't want him to give out his phone number. This year, he's he's actually reassigned to our North Campus, which is our shelter up there, and I want to make sure everybody gets through to us. So if you call the eight one the one two three num one two three four number, and or the My Fort Worth app. Either one of those will get to us, and then we'll get out there to you. Yeah, and normally the first come in about sunset, which could be 8 o'clock, uh, and you get further to the city. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, after 6 p.m. Yeah, and these guys like the overtime. <laughs> so, you know, I only get comp time, but they love the overtime. So they go out there, and they'll be out there until we get the egrets, until we stop seeing them coming in. All right, and if I can continue, last year there was some talk about having a coordinated effort between your officers and the public to drive these birds in a specific direction because you might go out at the lake and scare them off, and they'll start flying east. And then uh, somebody in the neighborhood will scare them right back to where you were <coughs> instead of keeping them going in the eastward direction. Exactly. That's part, of, that's part of the work that we're working on to try to get them to deter to our open space areas. Um, there's um, some research out there um, that um, around mating calls and setting up a sequence of mating calls. Uh, without getting too, too much of the weeds, um, we're looking at ways that we can like set up um, um, attractive kind of devices that'll attract them to where we're trying to take them but you're absolutely right like the goal right now is to t deter them until we further study how to deter them and it'll coordinate a way to get them to our open space conservation areas um, the other thing you brought up was related to permits um, individuals can't um, request permits um, individual residents um, the city of Fort Worth as a governing entity is able to request uh, the permit directly from um, um, our federal government so that's how we're able to get a permit and that permit um, all of the things that are uh, listed as activities for deterrence and other uh, measures um, Chris has to be on site for those measures to be implemented so that that permit isn't a blanket um, permit as he said earlier for all of us to operate within it um, it's only him and his team and he's typically on site with those that, that, that applies to the permit for the we will get back on the screaming sirens with the fireworks ordinance just to make sure. That was the term that I was referring to was the fireworks. Oh, okay. yes, we will get back. We have to do some, um, we'll, I'll read through the ordinance. Um, we'll also ask our legal team and our code compliance team just to make sure that we're giving out the right um, 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 instructions. Also in our education materials, I think it does list what devices are allowed. So we'll sort through that and we'll send an email this week with that, those specific um, answers. Yes, ma'am. How, how do you get the word out to all the neighbors about the egrets? Mm -hmm. Because some people don't use the network. Some people don't have you know, online services. And I was just curious, we get water bills every month. Is there some way you can put a notice in a water bill so that everybody gets notified? That is a great idea, and that's in the plan. So we are working on that. Um, we'll also, um, so we do robocalls, emails, um, those kind of things. Right, exactly. So we try to do different tactics because usually, and there's some folks who don't open their water bills. They just throw them right in the recycling bin, we hope, right? So um, so we try to do multiple um, you know, way, forms of communication. Kendall was going to add to that. And I know because I talked with several people about the water bill or adding some literature in the uh, water bills. So that's a little bit harder on our end just because there are different city departments that already plan out. And so attached to each water bill, there are certain departments that uh, include or already have scheduled out to include their literature for the month. And so uh, Needless to say, when we looked at it after the last listening circle, which we had back in July, um, it was pretty much scheduled well into this year. 
um, but we are still working with the neighborhood association um, to make sure that we can get printed material out you know I'm always happy to do you know print out whatever we can from the office and, and to deliver it or whatever we need to do but those are kind of in addition to the robocalls and social media and email um, you know just working hand in hand with the neighborhood association and of course and I work with Miss uh, Anita over there um, and just you know really word of mouth and make sure that we're calling everyone in the neighborhood so that they can call on everyone and I'll, I'll just add an antidote to that if we all do a little we can get a lot done right so if you tell three people you know and, and then they tell three people they know we've told a lot of people so um, in addition to all those things Kendall said you know you telling three people that even your neighbors on either side of you um, will be a huge help to getting the word out I'm a, Right then, back. I've noticed in, in some small neighborhoods, um, there have been signs on like prominent street corners mentioning about egret, deterrence, and stuff. And I find that very effective. Yeah. If you drive through that little neighborhood, have, has there been any thought, you know, at a, a larger maybe district level on some of the more prominent street corners, something that the city might do with a little sign like that? So, so the people that don't open their water bill or can't get it in there or something will go, oh, it's not a gunshot, you know, because we get it over and over. I don't know how they yeah. not be aware of egress, but there are a lot of people that aren't. Those signs may be relatively inexpensive way to communicate with a lot of people. Absolutely. And first of all, my eyesight's failing, but Michael? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> One of the best instructors at TCU, Go Frogs, a biologist at heart. So I'm sure he's really enjoying this. But um, absolutely, that's a really good idea. We can take it back to our team. Um, I, you make me think if we can get yard signs printed and then give them out to neighbors, at least we're um, aware of that. So let us look into that. That's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. Candle Ridge did that one year. I remember seeing them all. We wondered how to get them. but I hadn't I think that was one specific person that actually did them. Uh, I don't know if she got funding from the HOA or with the HOA or how did she how she did it. I know we try not to put them out because there's a bandit sign thing, and I understand we tried to not pull them up and all, but. Uh, I don't know if y'all can work together. I know there was a printing company that the lady used that was in this area, and they did it for really cheap. So I don't know. If that's you a good to... idea too. Yeah, and you know that's the power of neighborhood associations as well. If there's opportunities for us to partner on that, um, we'll certainly um, do what we can. But, um, we have time for maybe two more, and I see two hands, so we'll go here and then there. Well, I was just gonna say we're part of Wedgwood South, and mm -hmm. so we're the ones that have the. The signs and the fact Denny did the yeah, signs and I for him out of our yeah. neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I requested this year to add noise abatement on there, and so there are two different types of signs. But we've already had people that have really res been responsive to those, especially adding that on there that we would be making noise. That's really good. We'll coordinate after this to see y'all's design and all that. Maybe we can share that with the whole district. <laughs> Seems like the work is already done, so. <laughs> but when we, I'm in that same neighborhood association, and, but when I go out, the two of us put the signs out, and I put them out for the last two years, but I always go and ask the property owner for permission to put the sign in their yard. Absolutely. And I've, I've told them that it should be there for two or three months, and I will come around and collect them, and you get most of the signs back, but not all. That is such a great idea. We'll connect with both y'all after that. I think it's really important that we share those best practices with other neighborhoods who may not have as much experience as our Wedgwood South and Candle Ridge neighbors. So thank y'all for that. Oh, one more question. Yes. Yeah, we, we found the best way. Uh, we live very close to the uh, egret tree last year. So we, we one, one fellow wrote letters we delivered them, we went door to door, we talked to all the neighbors, we raised the money, and we got the job done. And that's the best way. Now, we were very lucky in that the city paid to have two ash trees removed across from my house, and when the Smith Lawn and Tree Company was there. So I asked them about these, the two trees we wanted to get rid of. Mm -hmm. And the man said, we got quotes of $3,500 to start with. 
Uh, and he, his company did it for $1,500. He said out of the season in the winter. So yeah. it's a good company. To, we're very, very happy with them. They did beautiful work. And in cleaning up the yard, that was an all-day job that they, they ate three or four hours. Right. Gave us for free. I mean, they, were, they treated us right, and we, we paid for it, and we're hopefully. But I uh, like the company, and you have to get out and do, your, do the street pound and knock it on doors. You've got to do it yourself, because no one else is going to do it. <laughs> That's a really good story. Thank you for sharing that advice with us. Well, that is the conclusion of tonight's listening circle. Um, as always, thank y'all so much for what y'all are doing. Um, if y'all have any additional questions, y'all can always reach out to our office, um, or you can call the one two three four number as well, and we'll be happy to assist you and serve you um, as we navigate and migrate through this eager migratory season. So, um, thank y'all so much. I'll hang around for a few uh, moments with you all, and uh, we'll see y'all at the next one. Thank y'all.